Thank you, Dr. Swami. One last question before we close today's episode. Uh, uh, friends want something else. You say that you get up very early in the morning. Yeah. What is the essence or the, uh, I would say, importance of that Brahma Murta according to you? Because most sure. of us try to catch your attention on Twitter or email during <laughs> hours. And everybody is knowing that habit. So what do you think is the importance of this Brahma Murta? Well, see, um, uh, today the Western world has completely stolen one idea from India. And that is multidimensional intelligence. All through these centuries, the Western world knew only one dimension, and that was called the cognitive dimension where you learn physics, uh, you know, you see phenomena, and then you try to find an explanation. And then draw a... So this uh, concept of uh, intelligence being nothing but uh, cognitive intelligence, physics, mathematics, biology, zoology, that sort of thing. But the ancient Hindus, they called it by different names, but the Westerners have now given it their own names and passing it off as theirs. They, uh, there is a mode of talking and that uh, which wins over the other thing. That is, if you feel that there is a person who is misinformed, but he could be converted to your point of view, then there is a, a, a de development of, the, of your of mind, uh, which is now in the Western world called as emotional intelligence. The same thing, there is a moral intelligence. What is right now? This is why you have to read Gita and Ramayana and so on, because uh, Mahabharata and Ramayana and so on, because there, there are regular moral positions on the face of it, but exactly the opposite step you take. Uh, as I told you about Bali and then I told you about Karna. I didn't tell you about Karna, but I told you about Bhishma. Karna was also a totally immoral by standard definition. But, uh, but uh, Krishna explains why it is uh, uh, you, uh, only mo moral actions only between two moral people. One of them is immoral, the other has a right also to be, to, if, he's, uh, if he's to finish him, but he can use immoral methods. So this, uh, um, uh, these, uh, the, this intelligence is called moral intelligence. Then social intelligence, I, I, I should not set up a factory and put uh, um, uh, you know, fumes into the air because that will spoil the health of the society. So socially, uh, your action should be such that society shouldn't be there, uh, destroyed. But the most important uh, thing is where I will answer your question, is something which the Westerners now call a spiritual intelligence. There are books written on it by separate books. You go to Amazon and you put spiritual intelligence, emotional intelligence, you will get uh, several separate books for it. So spiritual intelligence is that the uh, our rishis said your brain has Wi-Fi, which the Westerners now call as neural Wi-Fi, N-E-U-R-A-L, neural Wi-Fi, and all knowledge, past, present, future, is in uh, uh, waves around the earth. So if your mind can connect to that, then you will get all knowledge that you want. There is no problem you can't solve. And so the easiest time to do it, according to our rishis and munis, is 4 a.m. And I don't say that you know all through your life should get up at 4 a.m., but I certainly think that when your responsibilities are much less, especially family responsibilities are much less. Then uh, <clears throat> you uh, uh, should try and make it possible to get up at 4 a.m. And then you have to, of course, you do your yoga, you do your pranayam. Pranayam is very important because breath is the most important thing for your body's health. Uh, and you know, muscular muscular fitness is secondary. And then to develop your brain, you, you have to learn some mantras, which can be taught by any really good guru. And you, uh, with those mantras, you, your brain 
neural Wi-Fi gets activated and it gets connected to the cosmos, which we call as Brahman. And uh, you become a brainy person. That's why I get my four o'clock. Thank you, uh, Dr. Swami. Uh, unless my friends have any more questions. Uh, with this, we went. Uh, Arvind, okay. I have one small question uh, again back to Gita. Uh, Bhagwan Krishna has said, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. Uh, sometimes he will come back Krishna. again and again whenever there is any Pritranaya uh, Sadhunam Vinasya. Yes, yes. Do you think there is a time now for Krishna to come back? Well, do you think that um, uh, uh, the situation is so bad that uh, Krishna would feel impelled to come back? So this is an if statement. Paritramaya uh, sadhuna, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that, that, that kind of situation has to be there. I don't think we are in that situation. Okay. Uh, uh, Krishna bhakts are enough. Now you tell me this Ram Ram Mandir. Everybody failed to get a court case going. How did I get it going? It's uh, basically this that you know this is not this. We have not reached the stage where <laughs> well, the the, the, the uh, world is going to collapse. Uh, so therefore, this use of the spiritual intelligence, I found a way. Why didn't the others think that fundamental rights is an issue? Only I this whole uh, ocean of uh, and it was, uh, even I didn't find it. There was a, another lawyer who wanted to remain anonymous on the promise that that person said that you know, I will remain anonymous. I'll tell you the way. Out of the blue, she she came and she was a lady uh, lawyer. She went and came and then disappeared. I never saw him. Mean, she never worked with me again. And that's how I got it. So there are uh, these situations and, you know, you don't expect them, but if it comes, you understand how it just comes.